Okay. Now, this equation uh, that defined previously the flexure formula, as I mentioned before, is it shows the stresses uh, which are proportional to the bending moment M and are inversely proportional to the moment of inertia I of the cross section. Okay, this cross section. Also, uh, to note, the stresses uh, vary linearly with a distance of y from the neutral uh, neutral axis here, x. Okay. So, what did I actually say? Let's just draw it out quickly, all right? So, what I actually said was the stress. The stress. It's a weird six. Uh, a funny six, let's just say. Stress equals moments multiplied by y divided by i. That's a, that's all I said. There's no craziness to it. There's no secret behind it. Um, that's about it. It's, that's all there is to it. The only secret with uh, this equation is the i, the uh, the, um, the moments of inertia. Yeah, that's the only tricky part. Other than that, everything else is all good here. Um, so, moving on. M for this equation moments equals to the max moments of our diagram. Okay, so what is the maximum moment in our diagram here for the bending moment diagram? We know that it is 4.5x. Now, do you remember what y was? Well, if you can recall from what I said before, y is a distance from the neutral axis. Okay, um, so Let's actually define why. What is why? Uh, let's draw it out now. So if we get to our... Quickly just jump to our diagram here. Now, if we paste our diagram. Okay. Now, this distance here is what we want to find. What is y equal to? We know what x equals to. It's a redundant value. It's, of course... Of course, half of 90. Okay, that's what um, our x bar equals to. We don't really need x. I just wanted to show you what it is, but okay. But what about y? Okay, what is our y distance to the neutral axis? So, uh, the centroidal, if you may. Okay, so the centroidal axis. What is the y distance to it? In order to find the y distance, um, let's just repaste this diagram, but enlarging it. Okay. Now, if you look at this diagram, you would see that there are distinct objects that you can define from this actual diagram itself. There are three objects, and if you can see, there's a two triangles and a square, or well, a rectangle. Two triangles and a rectangle. If you combine these two triangles, you would get a rectangle as well. So you can say that there are two rectangles in total in this diagram, okay? Now the equation what I'm about to use is called the composite area function. Uh, sorry, the composite area formula. Okay, so there's the sum. Uh, is, <coughs> excuse me. The composite area fun, uh, formula is the sum of the sum i of a a i y i divided by the area multiplied total area multiplied. Um, uh, yeah, basically just the total area. Okay, so let's just put some numbers here to make sense of this formula. In order to find the centroid of uh, the actual overall object, you need to find the centroid of each and every distinct object that you can pick out here. Okay, so there are three mini centroids, as to say. Okay, there are three mini centroids of each. Um, object, object that you have uh, distinctly picked out from the actual overall shape itself. Uh, so to get to the centroid of a triangle, you need to go one third the distance from the base. So that's one third multiplied by 120, which is 40, and half, obviously, for a rectangle to get to its centroid, which is 60. Okay, so that's 40 and that's 60. Okay, so we define that. Now it's the distance, so every, by the way, because we're doing for y, it's always along the y-axis, okay? So along the y-axis, the y distance to the centroid of this triangle here, alright, 
which is 40 multiplied by its area. Okay? Area of the triangle, 30 multiplied by its height of 120. Close brackets. Now, the reason why I didn't say divided by 2 is because there's another triangle here. What did I say to you before? We can consider it as two triangles, uh, two rectangles in the end. So there's one rectangle here, and the two triangles added together is another rectangle, okay? So plus the distance to get to this rectangle, which is 60 multiplied by its area of 90 times 120. the whole thing divided by the area, total area, AIYO. 30 times 120 plus 90 times 120, which then equals 50 millimeters. Okay, so that Y value we just worked out in the end is Y bar equals 50 millimeters, okay? Um, okay, see, that's, a, uh, sorry, my bad, my bad. There's a bit of a mistake here, okay. Y bar actually equals U1 or U2. Now, what is U1, U2? Let me just quickly show you. It's another rule I have to teach you guys here, and that is... Control paste this one quickly again. I don't, can't be bothered drawing this. Uh, there's another rule I have to show you guys here, and that is because do you remember that that moments we took that max moments max moments for us it wasn't a negative it was a positive. By the way, you can have a negative max moments if it was like negative ninety, then we'll pick that as that's the largest moments because our moments was positive. Maximum moments was positive, not negative. It was positive. When we are looking at the cross section view of this uh, the beam, and apply this positive moments to it at the side view cross sectional view, we would notice this occurring to it, a compressive nature on the upper quadrant of the the cross section, and a tens and a tensile stretch at the lower quadrant of the cross section. Okay. What is this telling us? Okay, firstly, if we have a positive bending moment and it acts on the beam, the stresses are positive tension over the part of the cross section where Y is positive. Okay, so what is this telling us? Firstly, we would define here as U1 and we'll define here as U2. What is U1, U2? Now, let's just say U1, oh, wow, U1 equals to U tension, T. U2 equals U compression, C. Okay, U1, U2, remember these are the wide distances, okay? To the centroidal neutral axis, okay? So, moving on, the hard bit. Uh, the moments of inertia I. Hmm. Okay, this is the parallel axis theorem. Ix equals Iu. Oops, Iu, not I, Iu. Plus area multiplied by dy squared. Now, what is this telling us? Is that Iu... Um, IU is uh, simply base times height cubed divided by 12 for a rectangle and base times height cubed divided by 38 for a triangle. Okay, so this is for a rectangle. Let's just say rect and this is a triangle. Okay, moving on. Uh, now that you have that cleared, you can basically start substituting for Ix. Now, you have to do, you have to apply the parallel axis theorem, or let's just say the uh, moment of inertia theorem um, along um, for each distinct object, okay? So I'll be showing you that in my next part. Thank you for watching.